Hello, and welcome to my self-concept project. Now, I will admit I cheated a little. I used PowerPoint, but only because making a video of a poster or some other physical project is really, really hard. So I made a PowerPoint showing my self-concept. When you come in to give your self-concept project next week, you can't use a computer. You must physically show us something. First things first, I've discovered over the years of teaching this class that I can't teach interpersonal communication without myself getting personal. I truly believe that we can't learn about something so vital as how to communicate with others unless we examine ourselves. So I teach this class by teaching my life. Last semester, I had a student in my class who had concerns about the fact that I shared so much of myself. This student brought their concerns to my dean and I had a conversation with him about whether I should keep teaching this class. I told him, maybe I do get too personal. Maybe I put too much of myself into this. And he said I should keep teaching it. You see, this is a different kind of class. You're not going to learn about how to make chemical compositions or what happened in the War of 1812 or how to write that perfect poem. Those are all super, super valuable things to learn, and I could never teach any of that. But we, and yes, I mean we, not just you, but we are going to learn this semester is how to be better human beings, how to take the one really, really unique thing about us humans, the ability to use symbolic communication, and use it to make our lives better. Use it to make the lives of those around us better. So here begins my self-concept. For my project, I chose to do a modified Johari window. I will be talking about all four quadrants of the window, but not in the normal order. I'm going to start with the hidden. Now I gotta say in the last two years, my life has changed so much. And then the last three months, it has changed even more. One thing that has not changed is that, well, I'm afraid. And I don't hardly tell anybody, not even my closest friends, that I am afraid. So this is our little secret, right? But seriously, what am I afraid of? So many things, but probably most of all, I'm afraid that I will be rejected. Rejected by those I love, rejected by those I work with, rejected by my students. I deal with a lot of adversity really well, but I don't deal with rejection so well. It's something I'm working on. Okay, on to the blind. The funny thing about the blind area of the Johari window is that you don't really know about it, but you kind of do. You can ask your friends or family what they know about you that you don't know about you, but the moment they tell you, you know, right? But knowing and being fully aware of it are two different things. For me, I know that I'm codependent sometimes. I often find people that need a lot of help, and I give them a lot of help, and I let them use me as a result. This is unhealthy behavior, I know, but I don't always know when it's happening. That's the hidden part. Another part of my blind that I'm not really proud of is that sometimes I'm judgmental. I have a really strong opinion of how the world should work. I have a really strong feeling about how people should treat each other. And sometimes my really strong opinion doesn't match up with others. One example is my stance on gay and lesbian rights. Now, I'm not gay even though I do love Glee and I love show tunes and I used to figure skate and I don't like sports. <laughs> I'm much, I know, shocker, I'm straight. But even though I'm not gay, I have a lot of gay and lesbian friends. Many of them can't express their true love for their partners the same way I could, potentially. And that breaks my heart. These people didn't choose to be gay. They just are. And to be withheld the right to be with the people they want to be with in the same way that straight people can be, well, that just feels wrong. But I have a lot of really close Christian friends who strongly believe that marriage, according to God, should only be between men and women. I find it so hard to not judge these friends at times, and I feel bad for it. I'm working on this too. Okay, on to the open. Probably the most open part of me, I'm sure you guessed this already, is that I'm a performer. <laughs> yeah, I love to be silly. I love to get on stage. I love to be on I see teaching as an extension of performance. I have a captive audience, you can't leave, and you have to laugh at my jokes. Perfect. Part of my performance is to hide my fear that I talked about in the hidden section. I am on so much that most people don't really know me. Don't see that sometimes my performance is hiding this fear and sometimes sadness. Now, I'm not depressive, never have been, but I have times of melancholy, times where as much as I love being around people, I just wanna be alone. And now on to the newest 
part of my open. So new, in fact, that until July 7th of this year, very few people knew this about me. On July 7th, 2014, that was the day I came out of the closet. But wait, you say, I thought you said you were straight. And indeed, yes, I am straight. The closet I refer to is the closet of polyamory. So yes, I identify as polyamorous. Polyamory is a form of ethical non-monogamy in which a person engages in multiple romantic relationships at the same time. Everybody in the relationship is aware of everybody else. There is no cheating. It's all honest, open, and ethical. I discovered the notion of polyamory about three years ago. To be clear, polyamory is not polygamy, which is a religious practice in which one man marries multiple wives. In polyamory, there is no religious background, and women can be with multiple men or other women, just as men can be with multiple women or other men. Also, polyamory is not all about sex. That would be swinging, which is another form of ethical non-monogamy, which is based mostly on just sex. I actually believe that I've been polyamorous all of my life, but only recently figured out what that meant. And until July 7th, I kept this part of me hidden from all but my closest friends. And then I wrote a coming out letter and posted it on my Facebook and for everybody to just read. Talk about fear. That was the scariest day of my life. It was jumping out of an airplane with no parachute, but I did it, and I survived. The outpouring of love and support from my friends showed me that the world really is full of much more goodness than I think we give it credit for. Now on to the unknown. As I said, I identify as polyamorous, or poly for short, and poly is made up of various subgroups. I particularly belong to the group called solo poly. What that means is that in this point in my life, I prefer not to find a wife, nor do I want to cohabitate with any particular person. I don't have a desire to have children either. I do engage in multiple relationships, but with no intention of moving to the level of marriage or cohabitation. This makes me wonder what happens in my old age. Will I just end up all alone? Or will I continue to have the loving connections I feel with other people now? Also in my unknown is the question of whether I'll ever reconnect with my family. I haven't spoken to my mom or dad in over four years. It's a long story. I recently did reach out to my mom and have been emailing with my dad, but I don't know if we can ever fully repair that relationship. That's unknown. So to sum up, my hidden shrinks and my unknown becomes known. I write a blog about my relationships, about polyamory, about my past. I hope to turn this blog into a series of books about relationships and about my life. And I continue to reconnect with my family, especially my mom, who I miss so very much. And that is my self-concept. To my students, this is definitely longer than yours should be. Remember how I said I cheated? Yeah, I made a PowerPoint and I made it longer than you're allowed to. We only have about an hour to fit in 20 plus presentations. So you do the math. In your self-concept, share as little or as much as you care to. You get an A on the assignment simply for doing the assignment, regardless of length, regardless of depth. I can't grade you on you. Also, to be fair to everybody, you have to do this assignment. It's not cool if almost everybody shares of themselves, but you don't. So please, take this seriously. We'll be spending the next 15 weeks together. So, let's get to know each other now.